from the truth that you squandered your youth. And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that isn't afraid to wait a whole year to finish up a concept, or sometimes even longer than that. I tend to play the long game with this show. But before I get into that, let's address the uh, 900 pound crepe paper turkey in the room here. Yeah, it's Thanksgiving again, and like most years, I'm stuck putting out a full blown proper archive episode on Thanksgiving Day. And I've lamented in years past that I can't say I've ever really found any real Thanksgiving-centric archivisms, none that I think are all that significant anyway. And so couple that with the fact that my numbers are always pretty lousy on Thanksgiving, which makes sense. According to YouTube, 70% of my viewership is here in the States, and so I think most of us are off celebrating Thanksgiving, taking a long weekend, getting ready for the holidays, and, you know, just not doing the everyday mundane stuff. So, uh, yeah, I have made it into my day to just kind of step back a bit and take stock. So with that, getting back to my opening line... Last year, I put out a video which ran down my top 10 most popular archive episodes, and that was just based on the good old cold hard numbers. This year, and I was already kicking this around last year, I I'm stealing a bit from the great singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell here. So back in 1996, she put out her much belated first Greatest Hits compilation, and she would only allow her label to put that out. Must be nice to have that kind of clout. Uh, only allow her label to put that out if she could put out a counterpoint compilation, which she did, and it came out on the same day. So the greatest hits was simply called Hits. And then she put out a compilation that she thinks her greatest hits are of those songs and called it Misses. So, hits and misses. And today's episode is indeed the misses to last year's hits. Now, having said that, a few years back, I did a video called The Ones That Got OA, or Lost Classics, and I threw a lot of arbitrary rules at myself for that one. So this time around, the only rule is that I can't overlap with that aforementioned episode. Otherwise, it's totally open. And indeed, in one case, I am overlapping with last year's episode. There is one time where my opinion and popular opinion do line up. We'll start with that one, then we'll start digging a little deeper. In these final moments, we will attempt one last retrospective. We would like to thank you for supporting us over the last three years, but, like all good things, this too must come to an end. As already mentioned, let's start with that one moment where my opinion and popular opinion seem to intersect. As of my making this, the death of Analog TV remains the seventh most viewed archive episode. But upon listening back to the commentary track I did for this one, which was recorded before the episode was released, no less, I guess I really had my reservations about it. It sounds like I had some trouble researching it, too. But looking back, it's a pretty entertaining episode, and one that manages to successfully balance humor and history lesson. Of course, as discussed last year, 
I really mostly remember this one for inadvertently freaking out some viewers, leading them to think that it was the final Archive episode, period. Now, at the time, I had entertained that notion, just listen to that episode's commentary track for confirmation, but I figured the whole concept that I laid out in the episode was so ludicrous that it would be a non-issue. Because, you know, an unnamed band of self-proclaimed internet retro-tech geek overlords can totally just arbitrarily shut you down. Anyway, the only new thing I can add to this already pretty well-trodden episode was that my favorite botched shutdown, the one that accidentally ends with a bit of David Letterman's show, is that I only recently found out that the interviewee at that particular moment wasn't just some douchebag millennial stereotype actor, but a respected character actor playing the part of an intern of Letterman's, which apparently Letterman himself was oblivious to as well. Well done, Mr. Simpson. You had me convinced. And you made that botched sign-off that much funnier to me. I know where you live, be all. And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that keeps your nostalgia bubble from getting burst by showing only bits of promotional materials and compulsively avoiding substantial discussion. As much as I'm known to dump on nostalgia for the sake of nostalgia, this episode hits all the right nostalgic buttons for me. As such, I consider preview channels to be the definitive warm fuzzy archive episode. And this episode was made all the sweeter for me in that it was spawned from one of my all-time best thrift store finds, a whole stack of laser discs from TCI, now Comcast, Cable in Denver, to be run over the Sneak Preview Pay-Per-View Barker channel. Now, at the time, I figured those discs were just one of those things that only I would ever care about. So, to my absolute shock, when I posted a picture of those discs to the Facebook and Twitter pages, it got, up to that point, probably my greatest response. As such, I immediately went to work on an episode. And apparently this one is a favorite of some other folks, too. As of my making this, it's the 27th most viewed archive episode. Otherwise, I'm quite fond of the box shot <laughs> malfunction that happens throughout the entire middle stretch of the episode. And of course, yes, all the footage that YouTube allows at least from these discs are available for viewing on the Archive Annex channel. For a gritty urban action film to direct, he found it in the basketball film Above the Rim. This critically acclaimed movie stars Tupac Shakur and Dwayne Martin and will be showing soon at your house. And welcome to the Oddity Archive. Oddity Archive. Oddity Archive. Oddity 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 Easily one of my favorite episode intros there. And even though it doesn't look like it, it took forever to make that stupid little opening. Anyway, there tends to be something extra satisfying to me about long gestating episodes. And this was, despite being almost five years into my still ongoing run, this was one of my first long gestating episodes. This was the result of a year or two of accruing various so-called video magazines. Now, normally when I'm dealing with ultra-stupid material, the fun in them for me is getting to watch your reaction to them. But in this case, I had an absolute blast making this one, and I think the stupid material is why I had fun with it. Everything in the episode was just so monumentally dippy that it created its own subgenre of comedy. From the pure white trashiness of the Easy Riders tape, to the ultra-vapid teeny-bopper junk of the two teen-vid tapes, 
to the downright Spinal Tap-esque metalhead tape, to the eternally riffable Playboy tapes, to me it feels like one winner after another. The only downside to this episode was that I'm pretty sure the teen vid tapes landed me on a watch list. Or two. Or two. 10. Oh look, here he comes, he's got him to make his move. But don't worry girl, you got nothing to prove. He's thinking he's sweet, so slick and sly. Don't go and check him out, just pass him by. He's at the end of days wondering what went wrong. Don't give him just a minute, he'll be back before long. Don't you want to save our planet? Because it would be good of us. We've got to join and save the world. Like the Video Magazines episode, this one is, to me, one of those all too rare one whopper after another episodes. So much so that to this day, no other public access footage I've come across even remotely competes with this stuff. And it's kind of why there's never been a third public access episode. In addition to all the great, <laughs> great footage, I think this episode far outpaces the original public access episode from 2013. My own sketches are kept shorter and more sparse, and the floor is mostly just open to all the whacked out footage. In particular, the music montage from this episode stands as one of my favorite archive moments. And I'm still a bit disappointed that nothing from this episode received enough votes for the Top 10 Earworms Thanksgiving episode a few years ago. I had to relegate my favorites to the honorable mention segment at the beginning of that episode. Anyway, just in general, this is home to the most wonderfully whacked out bunch of characters that have ever appeared on Archive. A pretty fine girl, you mean? Beware, beware, a pretty fine girl. My makeup always turns orange. Everything I use, my blushes never, they always turn on me. My lipsticks turn on me. I've never made any real secret that my favorite archive episodes tend to be content driven, as opposed to tech driven. As far as I'm concerned, they hold up best to repeat viewings and are the least likely to fall out of date. Better yet, I love it when I can share some of my finds without feeling like I need to tie it to some greater concept. Hence, the ever ongoing series of random media vinyl, audio cassettes, reel to reel tapes, etc. With that, the third and most recent, as of my making this, round of random audio cassettes is easily my favorite of not just the audio cassette episodes, but probably the random media episodes in general. In this one, we're treated to a uh, mutt tape, as it were, originating from Baltimore, Maryland, featuring a mix of oh-so-distinctly 1988 air checks from the local Top 40 station, and a good chunk of a discussion from an especially neurotic speaker at a beautician's convention. Which, in retrospect, I probably should have transcribed. It's kind of hard to hear. Anyway, aside from that, we get in one last dose of beautiful downtown Aurora goodness with the demo tape from local Nirvana clone Love Buzz. Incidentally, a tape I've been using as seating music, if you will, for live streams in more recent years. Anyway, we also got a uh, truly comical partial audio infomercial for a thing called Pycnogenol, which ultimately got shut down by the Federal Trade Commission. But of course, the real winner of this episode is an album shared by my old friend Ben, no relation, of classical gas emissions infamy. That album is the seemingly one and only effort by Maria. Just Maria. 
and it's one of my favorite things to appear on Archive. Ever. I can only guess that she had something to do with the higher dislike count and the low view count for this one, which actually kind of amuses me for some reason. B104 hopes you've had a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And if you're celebrating throughout the holiday weekend, remember not to mix drugs and alcohol with driving because it could be very dangerous. Yes, Fallen Windows did get released at the time. At the risk of sounding like a totally pretentious schmuck, Charlie Chaplin once said, If you want to understand me, watch my movies. This is how I feel about the music, quote unquote, career subseries. If you want to understand Crazy Old Benny Boy and how he got that way, watch these episodes. You may wind up having to plug your ears during a lot of the song excerpts, though. I think what possessed me to make these episodes was that making fun of quote-unquote bad music is a long-standing part of archive-dom, to the point where I still receive periodic blowback for doing so, as if I'm too dumb to understand that every album, movie, etc. that gets made is something of a mini-miracle in and of itself, and that I think I'm somehow inherently better than the stuff I poke fun at. As such, yeah, it seemed like a good idea to take aim at my own work, especially since I'd been known to mention my pre-archive exploits from time to time. Of course, as I kind of expected, the episodes didn't do too well in the numbers department, but by the time I'd done the first two installments, it seemed pretty lame for me to just abandon the story, so I dutifully proceeded to deliver another chapter once or twice a year, ideally between much more standard and less esoteric episodes. If nothing else, I've appreciated the periodic comments saying that these episodes helped spur a few folks into trying their hand at whatever creative exploits of their own. As for the more disparaging comments, well, I kind of expected it. Frank Gorshin for RCA Select Division. Hi. You people are watching me on RCA's new Select Division video cassette recorder. Boy, if you're a TV freak like I am, you're going to love what you're about to see. Let me demonstrate how Select Division works. Every now and then, I try to do some kind of retrospective on each home video, or to a lesser degree, audio format. So, it was inevitable that I would attempt a retrospective on VHS at some point. And I knew from the get-go it was going to have to be a sub-series. There was no way I was ever going to cram even a fleeting glimpse of everything into a single 20-30 to 30 minute archive episode. However, it was a massive shock to me when I started looking into this undertaking back in late 2019 that no one on YouTube or elsewhere had ever attempted to round up anything even remotely resembling the entire VHS saga. This series also functioned as a good opportunity to try and revisit and amend some of my own failings in the past on the subject, like the VHS Betamax format war. I guess I'll mention the internet popular 
pornography theory one last time. That wasn't the goal of this little undertaking of mine to be definitive. What I wanted to do here was give just a good overview. While I maintain that someone ideally involved in the industry needs to write the definitive tome on the subject, I'd like to think that I was able to knock out a serviceable and probably about 90% accurate history on the matter. And if it weren't for the copyright issues, yes, I think a vanity run of VHS copies of this one would be poetic. about to witness a new dimension in entertainment. Peter Lemon Jello. As far back as the pay TV, but not cable or satellite episode, way back in the earliest days of archive, every now and then I come across that topic that winds up being a massive rabbit hole. As in what I initially thought would be a simple, straightforward topic, winds up being a deep, multi-layered, multi-faceted monster. As of my making this, I think The Ballad of Peter Lemon Jello comfortably sits at the top of the list for an absolute mind fuck, for me at least, of a topic. Hell, even the ever-infamous Santo Gold from the infomercials episode only got five minutes. Anyway, in this case, the episode was actually going to be a general assessment of that class of 70s and 80s musicians whose greatest notoriety came from hawking their own albums in TV commercials. At the very least, the episode was going to be two-pronged. At the very least, half on Boxcar Willie, who I still need to get back to, and half on the Northeastern U.S.'s favorite Engelbert Humperdinck clone, Peter Lemongello. And yes, that is his real legal name. No matter what I do, I get you. I guess I had no reason to fear that I'd barely get a five minute segment out of this one. It wound up being an unintentional half hour plus opus. And as I was editing the episode, because Ed never shows up anymore, I was still finding more and more increasingly unbelievable info. I already had to drop an entire segment on the man's doings during the 80s and early 90s just because the episode was running so long. To add to the mountain of info, not too terribly long after the episode came out, I heard from Peter Lemongello, Jr., in the name of equal time, because I did take some snipes at Lemongello Sr., I dutifully pinned Junior's comments to the top of the pile. Unfortunately, I don't feel like I learned much from it. So as it stands, as it sometimes happens in journalism, not that I claim to be a journalist, too much info really can muddy the waters. A curious craft appears suddenly in the thermal inversion above a large American city. Its only passenger, a beaver from beyond the stars. Almost from the earliest days of archive, I'd wanted to cover early cable TV-isms, and was only able to build up a nominal amount of footage over the span of nearly a decade. But, quite serendipitously, the footage I did gather dovetailed perfectly with one of the few genuinely notorious bits of early cable TV ephemera, National Lampoon's Disco Beaver from Outer Space, which premiered on February 23, 1979 on HBO. To make things even better, Disco Beaver, for short, was, at its heart, a spoof of cable TV, as it was in the late 70s. Specifically, Manhattan Cable, one of whose boxes has been sitting behind me on the archive bookshelf since 2018, and had already been covered once before. 
Yeah, this is one of my ultimate cases of serendipity. I certainly wasn't seeking such connections. Anyway, as a happy byproduct of those circumstances, I was able to score one of those relatively rare episodes where I was able to weave together a good mix of humor and history lesson. A couple of quick end notes to this one. Number one, Alice Platon's theme song better be a strong contender for another round of top archive earworms whenever I decide to do that. And number two, my Super 8 Digest copy of this movie is one of the most prized things in my collection of video and or film, even if it's of no real monetary worth. Incidentally, as of late 2023, Disco Beaver has yet to appear on home video or film in its entirety. Which is a shame, because at its best, it's trashy fun. A sacred shrine of the people of this planet. How will the beaver survive? Is there a plan? What mission? Good evening. This is incredibly low-powered, strictly analog television station, KLAK, Channel 31. Admittedly, these are on this list more for conceptual and stuffy artistic reasons than anything else. Much as I love the archive, it can feel like making the same episode over and over again at times. So those episodes where I'm able to completely throw the formula out the window tend to be somewhat precious in my eyes. Of course, way back in the first year of Archive, I did two, if not three, if you will, high-concept episodes. American Triple Ecstasy and the Archive's first Christmas episode, and if you squint just right, the first Halloween episode. But then it just kind of dropped off for the most part. It was only in 2019 when I really started doing these more out there, kind of quasi art film episodes again occasionally, and I settled on Halloween to do those episodes. In 2021, I finally went whole hog with the notion of supposedly running as a side hustle America's last analog TV station and going through the downright absurd sacrifices it takes to keep such a thing running. The 2019 episode was, in retrospect, just kind of a dry run. Now, there's two downsides to these episodes, aside from the commercial shortfall. One, they take an eternity to make, and two, the technical end of it is just unwieldy. The 2021 episode was me trying to figure out how to make an episode on a pair of Videonix doohickeys, namely the MX-1 and the Titlemaker 3000. The 2022 episode was me trying to focus a little more on the plot and taking another stab at the errors I noticed from the first time around, but kind of overdoing both. It took until the 2023 episode to find some sort of balance between the technical end of things and the plot and jokes. And yes, the 2023 special is very much a nod to Halloween 3. You know, the one without Michael Myers. And yeah, these episodes are where I learned that I look far, far better in black eyeshadow than I have any right to. Here we go again. I thought I was heading into Monty Python territory, but wound up squarely in Kids in the Hall territory. Or if you prefer to bring your own pumpkin, that's okay too. We're easy. And speaking of easy, we got easy financing. You know how you were able to finance that last tattoo of yours? Well, now you can finance your jack-o'-lantern too for just six easy payments of $19.99. $18.99 if you supply your own pumpkin. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join me next time when I do my best impression of all good American businesses. Where I just throw on a bunch of Christmas music for the rest of the year and 
try and sell out in every way possible. Actually, I think I'll just lock myself away in the break room. That sounds a lot more fun.